Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to another exciting week on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. I'm Bree Gabrielle, and you also? I'm Rick Murphy. Of course, you're Captain Rick Murphy. And can you please tell us who is the handsome devil over at the CCA workbench? That is Mr. Dave Farrell. Of course it is. Hey, Dave. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> You're mellow yellow today, man. I'm you, digging it. You're, you're matching the Camaro. You mean you can see him? I know. <laughs> I wanted awesome. to camouflage myself into the Chevy. He's a Camaro flash. You're invisible. <laughs> I'm a Camaro flash. That, that is good. All right, guys. Today we are talking all things dolphin, dorado, mahi, whatever you may like to call them. And they are personally my favorite offshore fish to catch, Rick. Why is that, Bree? Because they're beautiful and they're yummy. Absolutely. So <laughs> let's take a look at the Sport Fishing Magazine fish of the week and let me tell you Bree whether it's a bull dolphin or a cow like this one as you said they are beautiful and looking at the next photo the one thing that comes to mind is that there are also a, photo, a fish that you can catch on artificial lures when they're right there beside the boat Doug Orlander the editor has got one there but here you're talking exactly about all the beautiful colors greens mm -hmm. and blues beautiful spots in yellow that's what makes the dolphins so famous in the yes. fish world and they're just fun to catch in general that's gotta right gotta find the birds gotta find the weeds gotta do all that stuff all right rightfully so starting us off tonight in the southeast region is captain jimbo thomas who i know personally catches a few dolphin on his boat hey jimbo that's right Bree, and hello rick and hello dave well you know it's perfect timing to have dolphin as a theme species because they just started showing up in the southeast region late last week now we catch mahi on and off throughout the year, but peak season for them is June and July. It's not uncommon for recreational and charter boats to catch their limit, which is 10 per person, with a maximum of 60 fish per boat, which is way more than most people can eat and definitely way more than I care to fillet. Now in the winter months, most of the dolphin are caught along the edge of the Gulf Stream on live and trolled bait, especially when there's a good east wind pushing the bait and fish close to shore. The summer months, like right now, they're generally a little further offshore where we find them along weed lines, color changes, and around floating debris. And birds are one of the best indicators of dolphin activity. And a good pair of binoculars with a built-in compass, that's the best tool on the boat for locating frigate birds and terns working over schools of feeding fish. A lot of the fast outboard boats, they run and gun for dolphins, but I found that they go by or miss a lot of the fish and debris that otherwise would have been seen if you're going a little bit slower. That's why I like to do what I call putt and pitch. <laughs> we put out a couple of trolling feathers and small lures, and we fast troll around 10 knots. We look for signs of life, and once we finally find a fishing area or sight fish, we slow down to normal trolling speed of around six knots, and then we put out rig values along with the lures, and we have the pitch rods ready with small live pilchers or herrings and cup bonita and ballyhoo. Now we like to use bonita because it's really tough. It stays on the hook better. And also we catch a lot of bonita so uh, we don't have to go spend $15 a dozen on the ballyhoo. In the past week, the fish have been in 500 to 1,000 feet of water and there's been lots of uh, scattered sargasm weed and the birds have been on top of these dolphin pointing them out for us. Once we do find the fish, they've been eating both the live and cut baits and most of the fish have been schoolies in the 46 pound range, but I've heard of, a, uh, heard of a few fish in the 25 to 40 pound range, but you just have to get lucky on those larger fish. Now I have a photo here. This is Kathy and Fred Johnson with some friends with a nice catch of dolphin that we had aboard the Thomas Flyer last Saturday. All right, Jimbo, before you go offshore further, we want to talk about the Navionics from the Southeast region. Now guys, one of the things that Jimbo described to me when we were talking about Navionics this week was to certainly look at the canyons, the areas that are straight off of Key Biscayne. Now if you can tell here, the one thing that we can find is we have a definite drop off, but then as you get out around 1,000 or 1,200 feet of water, it's another severe drop off. And as you can see by looking at all of these parts right here, those are the canyons that Jimbo's talking about. You'll get an updwelling. Remember, you want to turn your boat to the south so that you can go in the current. Otherwise, you're going to be fishing up off of Palm Beach and out of that productive area. All right, what else you got for us offshore, Jimbo? You got it. Well, we still got good numbers of big black fin tuna being caught along the edge of the Gulf Stream in 120 to 250 feet of water. Now, these tunas have been biting throughout the day, but since they are usually low light feeders, the best time to catch some of these 
25 to 30 pound tunas is first thing in the morning or late in the afternoon fishing with live pilchards, herrings, goggle eyes, and blue runners under the kite or on the drift. Use 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon leaders and 5.0 to 6.0 circle hooks. And just like with all the deep water fish, the best fishing is going to be in areas with blue water and north current. Now moving inshore, there's still plenty of tarpon in the 50 to 100 and the 50 to 100 pound range looking to eat live crab, shrimp, and mullet in the inlets and around the bridges of the intercoastal waterway. Drift live baits in the mouths of the inlets on both the incoming and outgoing tides early in the morning and then into the evening. Then around the bridges, fish the dock lights and the shadow lines of the bridges on the outgoing tides with live and artificial bait. And then on the calm days, tarpon are being found off the beaches of the entire region and also along the outside flats from Key Biscayne south to Angelfish Creek. These fish can be sight fished with swimming rapalas, four inch jerk baits, and live crabs, mullet, pinfish, and crab pattern flies. And then we got sea trout still being caught in the south end of the Lake Worth Lagoon. And then in the north end of this came bay, sea trout are being caught around schools of small pilchards and glass meadows on the grass flats in three to eight feet of water. What you want to do is look for any bird activity to locate the bait fish, and these trout won't be far behind. Then fish with small live pilchards or pinfish under a Cajun Thunder float, or work Rapala shad wraps or gulp shrimp on a quarter ounce uh, jig head. You can use a hookup or a bass assassin jig head there. And then most of the trout have been in the 15 to 20 inch range with some larger ones mixed in. Also mixed in with these sea trout have been mangrove snapper, jacks, and ladyfish. All right, great report from the Captain Harry Southeast uh, region, Jimbo. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the First National Bank of South Florida hotspots. In short, a fish for a mixed bag of sea trout, jacks, mangrove snappers, ladyfish using small live baits on any of the grass flats holding bait. And then offshore, troll offshore in search of dolphin around the weed lines and under the birds and have a pitch rod ready, Bree. You can never have too many of those. Nope. Nope, you can't. You know. All right, let's hear from Mike Holiday in the East region where last summer was the best year yet for dolphin fishing and this year isn't looking too shabby either, right Mike? That's true, Bree. Uh, you know, it's just shaping up to be another great summer for dolphin fishing. There's been good numbers of dolphin caught in the last week in anywhere from 70 feet of water on out to 1,000 feet or more. And this is a time of year when you run and gun until you find something that looks good. Jimbo, it's almost like Jimbo read my report and then wrote it. I'm <laughs> claiming that I wrote first. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you find a weed line, a current edge, something floating or diving birds. You stop regularly, use binoculars to scan the water in all directions until you find something that looks good and then use that as your starting point. From there, put out a spread of feathers and strip baits or troll ballyhoo so you can cover a lot of water and have spinning rods rigged and ready to either throw live bait, cut baits or jigs and anything that follows a hook fish up to the boat. A lot of the larger dolphins this week have come out of deeper water and off of frigate birds. So keep one eye peeled to the sky for frigate birds right now. Average dolphin is more like eight to 12 pounds in my area. Then the blackfin tuna bite. Palm Beach County waters are producing just about as many blackfin tuna as they are dolphin right now with the best action south of Palm Beach in about 180 to 340 feet of water. A lot of fish are being caught by anglers that are targeting dolphin, uh, you know, flying kites and, or drifting as well. And if you really want to catch blackfin tuna on a consistent basis, then you want to drift and live chum around the wrecks. Live chumming, you know, that game draws the fish to the boat from a distance, and it also produces a lot of the larger blackfin. Start with a live well full of pilchards or, you know, our juvenile sardines, and just start ladling them over and put some baits, hook baits out directly into the chum line on 20 pound rods with 25 pound fluorocarbon leaders. And I like a 3-0 circle hook uh, where Jimbo likes a 6-0. Average blackfin, 12 to 20 pounds, but fish to 30 pounds have been caught this week. And I got a photo of one of those fish. That's, that's Charlie Forbes and Captain Eric Gape. They're out of Jupiter. They caught that big blackfin tuna in 200 feet of water off of Jupiter. And that fish ate a live blue runner. Let's go inshore, Mike. Okay, well, the June weather isn't the only thing getting hot right now. The sea trout bite on the west bank of the Indian River has really been consistent all week. The key here is to be on the water in the dark and fish until the bite shuts off, which seems to be about 9 o'clock in the morning. Some of the better spots 
have been off Walton Road, off Midway Road, off Torpy Road, up in, uh, in uh, Fort Pierce, and also on the double bars off Middle Cove and on the mooring flat up in Vero. Majority of fish are coming out of the potholes in the grass or around the mullet schools. You want to start by throwing topwater plugs in either black and silver or green and silver. Then you can throw, uh, you know, a saltwater assassin, four-inch shad in that Houdini, water boy, uh, meat hook, or uh, chicken on a chain colors. If you can't get out early, your best bet is to fish live sand perch <laughs> or pinfish under a cork in three to four feet of water. Average sea trout is two to four pounds. And now the calming seas that we got out on the beach are allowing the anglers more access to the tarpon on the beaches as they push out of the keys or moving north on their normal northerly migration. So you start your day looking for floating fish around the inlets right at first light. Then when the sun gets up, say around seven o'clock, that's when you run the beaches. Keep the sun at your back. When you spot a school of fish, shut down way away from them, approach them from a distance on the trolling motor. When you get within casting distance of the school, lead the fish with either a live crab, a thread fin, a sardine, or a pilchard. You can also throw lures like a, a blue and chrome crystal minnow or a mag minnow. Uh, and if the fish start to spook and move off quickly, don't chase them. Let them get ahead of you, then run up a few hundred yards ahead of the fish and wait for them to get to you again. That school will usually calm down in that amount of time it takes for them to get there and you'll get another shot at them. Average tarpon right now, 50 to 100 pounds. I got a photo there. Uh, Mike Proshek sent me that photo of a tarpon. That fish was hooked off Jupiter on a live crab. Wow, great picture, Mike. Hey, let's talk about bass. I know you like it every week. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. I keep hearing more and more about the Harris Chain of Lakes in Central Florida. They're seeing a lot of good fishing coming out of the open water areas on Lake Harris and on Lake Eustis right now. These fish are schooling in the morning. They're chasing lipless crankbaits like a, you know, a rip and wrap or a rattle trap in a chrome with blue back color, the normal shad colors. They're also being caught on June bug or watermelon red glitter colored tap outs. Uh, you know, just work slowly over the submerged grass or around the docks and scattered brush, particularly in the heat of the day. They're looking for shade in the heat of the day. The fish, in the, you know, they're, they're moving a lot right now. They're chasing bait, so you want to move around a lot. Don't stick in one area. Don't dedicate too much time to one area once that bite <laughs> slows down. As usual, live shiners fished up against the grass or close to the islands and around the mouths of the canals, particularly after the rainstorms, that's producing a pretty much the largest fish being caught. Average bass is one to four pounds, but those six, seven, eight pounders are being caught around those canal mouths and uh, some really nice fish being caught. Want to get early start, be off the water before the midday heat. Great report from the Decks and Docks East Region, Mike. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots. Inshore, catch and release snook in the surf at Hope Sound, Wildlife Refuge, bait fish, flies, four inch copper juice, sea shads and live pilchards for those snook. And then offshore, high speed trolling for wahoos off Palm Beach County. Troll Yuzuri Bonitos or Zonkers in 220 to 340 feet of water. A Zonker. A Zonker. Are you a Zonker? I don't I know. Think she is. Am I? All right, guys, don't put those rods down yet. When we come back, we're catching the keys and then going off the deep end with Dave. Got some good tips for us, Dave? Yeah, we're going to try to keep it from being a lumberjack when the dolphin comes up. I, I think this is good. We'll be right back on the Chevy Florida Insider. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Contender boats, performance through innovation. Humminbird, simply, clearly better. Dex and Docks Lumber Company, Florida's dock and seawall supplier. And King Sailfish Mounts, www.kingsailfish.com. What do you think? When I first sit in the seat, it makes me think of a BMW. I feel like I'm in a Lexus. You would think that this was a brand new Audi. It's like a luxury car. It feels kind of like an infinity. Very similar to Range Rover. This is pretty high tech. Yeah, it is. It reminds me of the Mercedes. This is Chevy? Wow. <laughs> I have a new appreciation for Chevy. They thought about me. I could totally rock this. This thing feels pretty boss. It looks kind of dope. That's pretty cool. This is the jam. Pretty bomb, dude. Maybe I will go Chevy. <laughs> Yamaha's next generation V6 four strokes are changing the game. Mid range power was awesome. Fuel, the burn, it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe the speed and the fuel economy is pretty impressive. I, mean, I couldn't believe the power, it was like a just 
this morning doing a quarter mile on a drag strip. And them things are like it's a whole other day. So I made the switch. Experience the difference for yourself during the Yamaha Discover V6 Offshore Demo Tour. See why we call it a game changer. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. it's time for FWC News and Notes. June 27th, there's a kids fishing clinic in Cape Canaveral. July 11th, there's another kids fishing clinic in Palm Coast. For more information, visit myfwc.com. But now, it's time to go off the deep end. Hey, we're over here at the CCA workbench and Hummingbird takes us off the deep end. You notice how breathes it, and now. Like real sexified our deep end. You saw that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't notice, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a tell long me time. about dolphin. Well, you know, a lot of people call them the perfect game fish, and, and I pretty much have to agree with them. You know, they jump a lot. They're abundant. They're very aggressive. You know, once you get on top of them, it's not hard to make them eat usually, and they taste really good. You know, they, when you they when do. you catch them, they're that really they good do. to eat, and it's hard to mess them up when you cook them. You know, that's another thing, you know. You can overcook any fish, and a lot of people do dolphin, but, you know, it, it's a good fish to catch and eat. And so, so where do people make mistakes? Well, you know, a lot of people make mistakes by pulling too big of stuff a lot of times because, you know, although a little dolphin will try to eat big things, they, you know, a dolphin has a smaller mouth for the size of the fish. And, you know, a great big dolphin can eat big things and will eat big things. If you want to catch big dolphins, pull big lures or pull and use big live baits because you'll catch the bigger ones that way. And they're usually deeper than the than the smaller ones. But if you want to catch a lot of them, you know, you can use a uh, ballyhoo with a skirted combo like the, what you're holding right there. That's a little mold craft. Right. And that thing, you know, this protects your ballyhoo so you can go faster. Also puts off a bigger uh, profile and makes a big water uh, bubble when, when you put that little thing up there in the right. front and that gets your attraction. It doesn't matter what color it is. You know, a lot of guys like pink for dolphin or green for dolphin. All you got to do is pretty much match whatever you see. If you see a lot of flying fish, put a lot of little blue and white stuff out. Tip, you know? Is this the typical size that you would normally use? Yeah, I've caught a lot of I've caught a lot of uh, dolphin on this this uh, Sea Star from Island Lures. I, that's one of my favorite lures. That also catches wahoo. I, I run that short, and dolphin will come in there and eat that, and wahoo will too huh. with a with a pin rig. Um, I like I like to usually if I if I get on top of some dolphin, I'll try to get below all the little ones. If I can, I you know got some uh, won a truck one time because we came up on a Cuban raft that had, had been left and there was a bunch of guys bailing these little ones on top we put some downriggers out and got down below and caught the big ones you know 15 pounds and up down Whoa. there underneath the bottom ones and you know that was big enough i want a truck over so, i was telling the guys here in the pompano beach rodeo so, that's how i want a truck so, so going you, down and getting the bigger ones you went off the deep end i went deep you know and, and that's <laughs> and that's how you got to get those bigger ones you know it, because they're going to be down there they're cannibalistic as well and anytime you're, you're seeing a bunch of little tiny dolphins you, if they scatter away, something's down there making them scatter away. And, and it's usually it's a big dolphin right, so, or a big wahoo. So a lot of times people 
mess up when the fish is close to the boat? What are the two mistakes they make? Well, when you're trying to gaff a dolphin especially, um, they'll, when you get it close to the boat, you don't want to lift their head out of the water. If you lift a dolphin's head out of the water, it likes to jump. And trying to jump, a, you know, gaff a dolphin when it's jumping in the air, I've seen guys do it, but they're the rare exception. Usually you're going to go over the top of the leader and, and bust them off. What you want to do is you want to come in behind the leader. Even if you're using your left hand, you want to come so, in behind so the leader. if this is our dolphin and uh -huh. I'm, it's swimming this way, right. the leader's going to be here. What yep. do you suggest? Well, you want to come in behind it and you want to come over the top of its so head. You're swimming like and this. just like boom. boom. And you don't and you don't want to you don't want to come down like you're hacking at something. You know, you want to just come down real easy and just come easy into Not the fish. Not chopping wood. And always know what you're going to do with the fish before you put a gaff in it. The dolphin fish probably hurts more people than all other fish combined because they get into the boat and they start going crazy. And if you've got double hook rigs or you've got a, you know, a, a, a lure that comes out and starts flopping around because he's foul hooked in one side and starts throwing that hook around, that's how people get hurt. And not only that, a dolphin's tail, when you lift a dolphin out of the water and you're standing there with the dolphin around, he'll start slapping you, you know, and you can get some pretty nasty slap wounds on you. You know, so what you want to do for any fish, and I say that for any fish, not just dolphin, but especially dolphin, when you gaff the fish, make sure you know where it's going to go before you put the gaff in the fish. Right. And you tell people, hey, the fish box is open. The fish right. box is open. Because everybody falls in the fish box at one time or another. I've <laughs> fallen in. I've gaffed a big dolphin and took a step back and fallen into the fish box and had a big dolphin laying on my right. chest, you know, bouncing with a big you know, hook bouncing around. And that can scare the crap out of you. So always make sure you have a place to put the fish before you put a gaff in it. Well, thanks for taking us off the deep end. No worries. Hey, Bree, now I know you've caught lots of dolphin. Have you ever fallen in the fish box? I haven't, but I'm <laughs> sure I will at some point. It seems that you have to pay your dues for that one. All right, now we're going to hear from Captain Randy Tao in the Keys region, where I do go fishing with my uncle for dolphin around this time of year. So I know he must have a really great report for y'all. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, the dolphin right now, it's prime time. Everybody's doing it. You know, it's a, it's a fish that most uh, everybody can go out and catch. And you can be as serious or as relaxed as you want to be in trying to catch them. Now, a lot of the fishing around here the last few days, it's been in about 500 feet to about 800 feet. Seems to be the depth. You want to start looking for anything floating or birds. Now, with the overcast days, the birds are a little less, and the sunnier days, the birds are out a little better. But um, that's, that's what you target. When you get out there, there's no real secret to it. You get in an area that you see some life, you see some weeds maybe floating with some bait under it. That's a key sign right there that there might be some other stuff around. I like to troll ballyhoos in the riggers while I'm looking for a floating piece of debris or a set of birds. And then when I see the birds, I'm going to read what they're doing. Are there two or three birds? Are there four birds? Are there ten birds? Or is it one, a man of war bird? So these are things that are really going to help you when you go dolphin fishing to kind of target a bigger fish or maybe stay away from a bunch of little schoolies that might be migrating. You know, a lot of times the migrating birds are, uh, there's a lot of them, and that usually means there's a lot of dolphin there. Fewer the birds, usually the bigger the dolphin. So that's, uh, that's how it works if you're looking offshore. One guy that knows how to play this game extremely well is Captain Brian Cohn on the Contagious. He does this every day this time of year. He fishes all the tournaments. It doesn't matter who I talk to about dolphin fishing or try to get a report. Somewhere in the conversation, his name's going to come up. And I've got a photo that he sent me the other day, and this is Dalen and Brooks Drummond with a 37-pounder they caught doing just that. Wow, what a great <laughs> fish. You're right, Brian's the top of the line down there. All right, Randy, what else you got for us offshore, Bub? You know, mutton snappers are one of my favorite fish to catch, along with yellowtails and groupers, but muttons in particular, you know, there's, there's a few ways to go about catching a mutton snapper, and I like to do it with live bait. I like to drift out in deeper water, 150 feet, 160 feet, and uh, I'll use a live ballyhoo or a speedo for bait. And if you get in these areas, a lot of your GPS will have marked on it hard bottom. And those hard bottoms have fans and they have some, some areas that hold mutton snappers. So if you have a condition 
where you can cover some ground, meaning the current and the wind are more in your favor, that you don't have to have three pounds of lead to get down, and you can cover some ground and find these mutton snappers, it's a lot of fun. You can keep the rods in the rod holder, watch the tips of them. I like to use a seven-foot rod with a light tip so I can see when I get a bite. And it's great for, for all types of anglers, whether you're kids, ladies, um, you know, a novice or an expert. They love uh, doing this type of fishing with the mutton snappers, and it's kind of easy living, if you will. Now, not every day you're going to have the conditions to do it, but when you do, it's a lot of fun. And I've got a photo of Brooke Sparksman from Pompano fishing with me the other day with a nice mutton she caught in the middle of a thunderstorm. Wow, that looks like a fun day. <laughs> All right, man, let's go inshore. You know, the redfish right now, you hear me talking about redfish and snook. Guys are tarpon fishing, so the pressure's off the flats and off a lot of the red fishing right now because guys are doing something else. Now, we still have some good tides. We still have some fish around. And guys, take a break. They don't want to go tarpon fishing. Let's do something else. And they'll get back there. They'll get on the flats. If you've got a technical boat, a boat that's going to go shallow and you can get up on the flat and sight fish, that's a lot of fun this time of year. And you want to fish the lower part of the tide. You want to get these fish coming off of the flats into the channels. And then you want to go back on the rising tide and you want to catch these fish coming out of the channels and runoffs so you can sight cast to them. And then if you've got a bigger boat, like a bay boat, you're kind of restricted because you can't get up on the flats and pole. So you're going to fish shorelines. You're going to fish some of the, the deeper channels and runoffs. I've got a photo that Captain Brian Permesa, one of the guys down here that does this every day and is very good at it, he sent me a picture of his angler, uh, Kurt Stutter, with a nice redfish they caught. All right, what else you got for me inshore, Randy? Tarpon, tarpon. You know, Rick, it's tarpon time. we got the Don Hawley tarpon tournament going on right now for the hardcore fly anglers. And, um, you know, we we don't have a lot of fish in the backcountry right now. It just is the way it is. You know, you, you don't know when the fish are going to be there and when they're not. But they're around the ocean side. They're around the bridges. They're around some of the closer areas toward the mainland. And we've still got some pretty good fishing around the Upper Keys bridges, Channel 2, Channel 5, and Long Key. But it seems like talking to Captain Rich Smith, who fishes down in the lower keys quite a bit, especially Bahia Honda, he had told me before that those fish kind of moved out. But I think in the last week or so, he said they've come back really strong. So there's a lot of fish down there. There's a lot of fish around the bridges. And if you're a fly fisherman, you want to sit on the ocean side and catch these fish migrating south. And there's also a pretty good push of fish coming north as well. All right, great report from the Florida Keys region. Randy, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the La Jolla hotspots. Inshore, redfish fish the flats of the last two hours of the falling tide and the first two hours of the rising tide in front of Flamingo. And then offshore, dolphins start looking for debris and birds 500 to 800 feet of water. Troll Ballyhoo while you're covering ground looking for those birds, Brie. Randy was here last week and he's yeah. not here. I miss him. Yeah. He's so great. He is the best. All right, now it's time to tell you about some tournaments in the Florida Keys. The Skipper's first annual dolphin tournament is scheduled for this weekend in Key Largo. Among the $60,000 in prize money is a top $25,000 cash award for the team that catches the heaviest three dolphin. The Big Pine Key and Lower Keys Dolphin Tournament is set for this weekend, features $35,000 in cash and prizes, including a $20,000 cash prize for the heaviest dolphin caught over 50 pounds. The third annual Ladies Dolphin Tournament of the Florida Keys is set for June 12th through the 13th in the Upper Keys. Cash and merchandise prizes will be awarded to the top 10 teams and determined by the combined weights of three dolphin catches. Founded by baseball great and avid fly fisherman Ted Williams, the Gold Cup Tarpon Tournament is set for June 15th through the 19th in Isla Mirada and is limited to 25 anglers. And now, Rick, let's hear from our trusty correspondent, as always, in the Florida Keys, Andy Newman. Well, hi, guys. With dolphin as this week's theme species, then our Florida Keys feature tournament must focus on the same. And one of the top dolphin tournaments in the Florida Keys, the University of Miami Sports Hall of Fame Dolphin Tournament, set for June 26th through the 27th in a la Mirada. It's an opportunity to fish with some of your favorite former Canes All-Stars, such as Randall Hill and Andre Johnson. Cash prizes and trophies will be presented to anglers in eight different categories. There's more details at canesfish.com, and for additional information on the Florida Keys, 
go to flakeys.com. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, fish fans. Randy, don't get mad at me. I just stole your slogan. Coming up, we have the Central <laughs> West and Southwest Region Reports waiting and ready, as well as the first winner of the CCA Star Tournament. So don't drift off. We'll be right back. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Drummond Community Bank. Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. Can a truck change how people feel about a guy? We talk to real people, not actors. We showed them two pictures of the same guy in the same location. The only difference, the vehicle behind him. The guy with the truck would definitely have like a German Shepherd dog. I mean, come on. Like a tarantula, a rattlesnake. What kind of pet would this guy have? Maybe like some birds. You know you want a truck. The all new Chevy Colorado. Motor Trends 2015 Truck of the Year. Welcome back to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, and I'd like to welcome Jerry Bergeron, the winner of the CCA Star Tournament's first prize. You won the truck. Tell me a little bit about the day. Well, it started off um, real slow, and we were in a place called Cockroach Bay in Tampa Bay. Uh -huh. Uh, I was looking for redfish because I was familiar with the area, right. and I knew kind of how the fish went and how, where they might be, right. and we spent like four or five hours trying to find redfish. Right. Couldn't find a redfish. So around 1.30 or so, uh, we decided to go on home. We'd been right. up since four o'clock. Uh, on the way in, my wife Nancy said, why don't we stop at this place that this guy showed us about five, six, seven years ago? Uh, I said, well, okay. So we went in behind this island right. and uh, anchored up. I put on a white bait, right. threw it in the shadow line under the mangroves, and pulled out a redfish. Right. Well, it wasn't the right redfish that I was looking for, but let it go, put another white bait on, threw it in the exact same spot, and the line took off, and it was flashing silver. Right. I couldn't understand that. I thought, well, maybe it's a trout or a snook, small snook. Well, it wasn't. It was a, it was uh, a redfish tag, a that had rappers. a little spaghetti tag on it. Right. I kept it in the water, looked at it. It had CCA star number. I called the number. It was Lisa. The tournament director, she said, you have a star redfish. And since I was registered and a member of CCA, I won the You won truck. the truck. 
You want a GMC truck? GMC 1500 Sierra. All right. Well, good job. Congratulations from all of us here at the Chevy Florida Insider Fisher Report. Bree, what do you think about that? The well, man he won got a, a truck. truck. You know how I feel about that. I want to win a truck. Good job, <laughs> Jerry. That was awesome. The moral of the story is you have to be registered, though, right, Rick? That's absolutely right. Because so many people caught them, but they weren't registered, so they missed out on the truck. All right, Jeff Page from the Central West region is here to give you some good news about that dolphin bite. Tell him, Jeff. Hey, you guys. Yeah, you know, although we aren't as well known for the good mahi bite in the Startron Central West region, anglers can still manage to catch them, especially in the summer and fall months. Look for them starting out in 100 feet of water on out. And most of the time, Bree, they're going to be close to the big schools of Spanish sardines. You know, you can find that by looking for birds as well as marking big bait schools with your hummingbird bottom machine over hard bottom or structure. Once you've located the bite, what you can do is you control small lip plugs like X-Raps or Yozuri's, or you can put out two or three flat lines with a live thread or a live filtered on it, and once you've hooked up, don't reel him right in right away. Won't be, won't be a bad idea to throw out a few chummer live filters to get them popping, and then you can almost sight fish them when they get going around the boat. Now, our dolphins don't average as big as a lot of the fish in other areas, the five to 15 pounds. Staying offshore, red snapper, you know, it's June 5th now, June 4th, and on the 1st, Red snapper opened in our region, and there's been lots of red snappers brought into the docks from the south, central, and north part of my region. And uh, seems to be the starting point from all the captains are telling me 90 to 100 feet on out. The good news is there's been some bigger fish in closer. So some guys are catching some really nice ones in as close as 90 to 100. There's been no problem getting them. They've been getting them on frozen cut sardines as well as live pinfish. Uh, look for the snappers holding on the same hard bottom and ledge areas that you catch the mangrove snappers and the groupers. I've got a photo tonight of my friend Mike Davidson of Tropical Cadillac with two good reds he got Monday morning when the season opened. I love that picture. Really. Hey, looking <laughs> good there, Daddy. All right, let's go uh, in short. Inshore tarpon, Rick, the tarpon bite stays strong throughout the entire region and throughout this past full moon we've had. A lot of times the tarpons might pull a disappearing act, but they haven't this week. Staying strong along the beaches off of Venice, Englewood, Longbow Key, and Siesta Key. Live crab lead the way in the live bait category, but the dead baiters have been wrecking them, especially up around Passage and Egmont Key. Big tip of the hat to Captain Billy Alstrom, who had 17 leader touches last Saturday to, 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 to destroy the rest of the field and win the Conley GMC Suncoast Tarpon Shootout. Now, as the fly anglers go, they've been doing real well, Rick, in the mid-afternoon to afternoon days, throwing purple and black flies at smaller groups of fish on top of the sandbars just outside of Big Pass, New Pass, and Longbow Pass. Got a photo tonight of Blake Stone Whoa. with a huge 44-inch girth tarpon he got on a fly Monday off of Sarasota. That is a stud fish. Great picture, Jeffrey. Go ahead, tell me what else you got for me in Red short. Red fish with the recent big afternoon thunderstorms, rains, coupled with the full moon. The redfish action, Rick, has improved big time throughout the entire region, starting to the south. The outer bars off Bull Bay, Turtle Bay, and Widdens Creek have had two or three big schools of fish that are hitting topwater and subsurface plugs like Rapala skitter walks and twitching wraps, along with soft plastics like the Saltwater Assassin 4 inch sea shad in the chandelier isle color on a quarter ounce hookup chartreuse jig head. To the north, there's been a big school of reds off Long Bar Point and they're staying in three to five feet of water. You can throw a quarter ounce gold spoon at them, or of course you can throw live filters or the mirror silver and chartreuse, mirror lure, mirrodine. And I've got a photo tonight of Alexis Dillard of Ocala with a nice red she got in Sarasota Bay. Real quick, don't forget to sign up for the CCA Star Tournament, or make sure you do because you don't want to catch one of those tagged fish without being signed up.
All right, Jeffrey, great report from the StarTron Central West region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the sea sucker hotspots. Inshore mangrove snappers holding on any rocks, docks, and down trees in the passes and inlets throughout the entire sea sucker Central West region. And then offshore, amber jacks, big AJs holding on the wrecks and ledges in 90 to 110 feet of water off of Venice. Whoa. I thought Venice was in Italy. I mean, it is. Something like I've that. I've been there. You have? It's beautiful. Me too. It's all in water. We beautiful. should go sometime. Take the take Kathy, Joe, whoever Everybody. wants to go. Everybody. Let's you go to Venice. Go? Hey, yeah, man, let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's go. Uh -huh. All right, Rick, what do you say we introduce our next captain, Mr. Ronnie Houston from the Southwest region with plenty of report to give you Southwesterners. Well, as you know, the team species is dolphin, and on the west coast of Florida, it's slightly different than what, what they do on the east coast. Even though we're targeting the same species, we still concentrate on weed lines, although they're not as abundant and they don't go for miles, but we still fish the smaller patches because why? They still hold bait. And once we find bait in those areas, we work a the pattern is similarly the same as what you do on the east coast by simply trolling ballyhoos on feathers, or simply naked or using bubblers, as well as live bait or cut bait, all work once located. Now on the, on the southwest side here, depths recommended to start are about 100, but, but depending on the day and the bait and the wind, you can start catching them as, as close as 80 feet. We still look for birds or we look for frigates, as well as floating debris. And once schoolies are located, just about anything will work for them, including spoons, bucktails, live pilchards, cut bait, and always be on the lookout for bulls and cows, which are the bigger ones. We do catch them in the region, but most of the time the smaller fish are the pattern, and it's all generally the same. I have a couple pictures here with Captain Mike Avenon with a group of customers with some dolphin, and then also I've got another picture of a bigger fish caught with Captain Mike Avenon. So there is opportunity to catch the schoolies, and then also get you your cow or a bull. Good job. Now, Go ahead, Ronnie. Now, still on the offshore side, weather's been great. Red snapper season open. We want to concentrate on the red snappers right now from Fort Myers Beach all the way to Boca Grande. Concentrate in depths right now from 125 to 175 feet. Now, structural is vital to this thing. Big or small, finding the right place, no matter if it's a long piece or a short piece. Actually, the smaller pieces have been holding bigger fish. Once you locate these fish on these pieces, Simple baits such as frozen squid, live pinfish and grunts will work. Strongly recommend 60 pound fluorocarbon leaders, 80 VMC circle hooks, and you'll also find in those areas vermilion snappers up to four pounds as well as scamps, scamp groupers in the mix. It's been a great bite offshore with the weather, especially since red snapper season opened. Now on the inshore side, talking about the tarpon. As reported by Captain Matt Haig, the last couple days, He's been fishing only the first few hours of the morning, but then going out in the later afternoon, concentrating on mouths of the passes, just inside the passes, and also out on the beach. Right now, anywhere from Sanibel to Stump Pass. Trying to target fish that aren't pressured, but staying ahead or behind pressured fish, which has been the best luck for Matt. Now, he tells me, depending upon where the fish are on the water column, he's using live crabs. If the fish are deeper, he's just drifting them. But if the fish are on top in the water column, he's using corks on top. Like I said, if the fish are below or above, you can also use several other baits. The crab has been the best. The pinfish also work. Thread fence will also be working. Areas where the fish won't eat, concentrate on cut mullet and ladyfish. They've also been working. Right now, the fish are averaging anywhere from 70 to 150 pounds with fish up to 175 pounds. I've got a Picture with Cap Matt Haig with a tarpon release. Tarpon fishing has been great with the weather we've been having. Now also, on the inshore side, the mangrove snappers. A little down south, you want to concentrate on the Chatham River, Houston River, Barron River, and the middle bays and passes. Independent islands from West Pass to Dismal Key are loaded with mangrove snapper. Plus, these areas also have a lot of hard bottom, as well as down trees and piles of debris sweeping on points that have been piled up over years of current. You can fish the current by anchoring up or using the 8 to 10 foot power poles on the flood tides. The power 10 footers have been working the best. They will hold you in the current or just fish off the eddy. You want to concentrate on using a chum bag or chum live pilchers to draw the fish to the top. Once you get them up, cut pilchers, herring and shrimp are also working. 
where you can simply use orange, yellow, brown, or chartreuse bucktail dip with shrimp, or use shrimp for crab bangs made on the bucktail. It's a fun bite and also plenty of legal sized fish in the mix. All right, great report, Ronnie. Florida Outdoor Experience Hotspots coming up. And Captain Ron says, inshore, redfish, rocky bay to new pass late in the afternoon, high along the independent islands and shorelines using live pinfish, pilchards, or cut mullet and ladyfish. And then offshore, cobias, the near shore wrecks from Naples to Fort Myers Beach using chum bags and free line live crabs, pinfish, pilchards, and thread fins. Don't be a chum bag. <laughs> get it? Ah, ah just being it. nice again. Okay, guys, get ready for the Central East Region <laughs> Report and all the fishing swag you'll need when we visit Dave over at the workbench for some new products. What you got for us, Dave? That looks know. good. Find out what's under the skirt when oh, we get well, back. <laughs> of course, you, you would, you would. I all like right. your style, Dave. All of that Peek and boot. more when we return. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Hook up lures, premium lures for serious anglers. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen. Navionics, we start where the road ends. Maverick Boat Company, celebrating 30 years of leadership in innovation, conservation, and stability. And First National Bank, your first choice for better banking. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. fishermen are created equal. Some just use better fishing line. here at the CCA workbench and we got to talk about new products Dave. Yeah man. The Sage. The Sage. Sage. Got a Sage fly rod there. That's a 12 weight. That's this a big is one. the Sage Salt. The newest, the latest, the greatest from Sage. Four piece rod. Beautiful. Nine, nine feet long. Absolutely. I've been using this. 
I've been casting a lot of rods for a lot of years, fly rods. Very fast taper, throws a very, very tight loop, and has a lot of backbone, so when you got the big monster on, you know, you can really pull on them. Yeah, I've only used uh, a couple of fly rods, and all the ones mine that I used were kind of like a big spinning rod, because I was just flopping to a billfish, but those things are different animal from those. That looks very nice. You know, the thing I like about it too, Dave, it's a four piece, you know, you can actually take it with you. If you're going someplace, maybe you're gonna go fish in Homosass or mm -hmm. you're gonna fish in the Keys. It travels very, very well. Yeah, it's got the big Fuji guides on it, cork handle, very nice. It's very a perfect, nice. perfect rod for today's tarpon fishing. And fisherman. you know, throwing big flies and yeah. catching big fish. Yeah, man, good job, Sage. You guys really did a good <laughs> one here. All right, what you got for us, Dave? Well, this is, these are some really cool pieces of jewelry from Mark Edwards Jewelry. These are their skeleton fish. They, you know, it, uh, you know, we had those fellows on before that made the Skeletor. Uh, they take the fish and turn it into a skeleton. Well, right. these guys do it with jewelry, and that's the big bull dolphin there, and then the other one's the redfish. And they make, you know, they make them out of these are sterling silver. They also make them out of gold. They were too smart to send me the gold ones. I would have snagged them. Well, but they, so they, does that mean we're snagging these? No, I don't know, man. I'm not hey going to go there. But these are hand, you know, they're cast and, and made here in Florida. Um, just really nice stuff from Mark Edwards. That's the bull dolphin and the red fish. I think that dolphin would look good. They also make realistic fish too. Mark Edwards, he, he does really good realistic fish too, oh, instead he? of just the skeletons. You know, so you can go online there and, and order all kinds of stuff. He does really good work. That would look good uh, against Bree's bronze chest. Yes, it Don't would. Don't you think? Yeah, sure. I'm sure. Why not? All why right. not? Why not? <laughs> all right, what else? Speaking of why not. Well, these are some lures from Amaral. This is a fella, uh, Antonio Amaral, and he makes these one at a time in Brazil. Uh, that's Beautiful. a super plunger head there. You know, these are all offshore lures made to catch uh, marlin. Um, he, he makes all different kinds and sizes. You know, this is a, uh, besides a su super plunger, that's just like a super chugger head. What's really cool about them, and I, you can tell I ordered these because I, I got the ones I want. I like black and purple because I like to, you know, when a fish is looking up, I want him to see a dark color against the sky. And, and what's really good about these are the, is the skirt material. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the guys will use the octopus skirt material that's mm -hmm. kind of wide. And it gets in the way of the, of the hookup a lot of times. And Amaral Lures from Brazil, he makes these with a the nice round and these things really cut through the, the business and get right to the thing. What you got? Well, this is a new Guy Harvey watch. Oh. Uh, this is the Guy Harvey Tag Hauer. Tag Hauer. The Tag Hauer. It's Look how a, it's, beautiful this it's, watch that's is, That's the guys. blue one. Uh, they also make another one uh, that's big and white with some diamonds on it. They wouldn't send me that one either. <laughs> Imagine you're going to take this one home. Absolutely. But, but it's a very nice watch. It's for sale only in the Grand Caymans at the uh, at the at Kirk Freeport and you have to call them at 345-949-7477 because that's the only place in the world where you can get that watch and it's a guy you know guy Harvey lives in the Cayman so that's where he he does his deal it and is a, a beautiful watch yeah that's the tag tag Hauer aqua racer blue with the guy Harvey it's got a little guy Harvey thing inside there and that's perfect for you know hanging around on the boat or or you know, going diving or anything, it's a beautiful watch. Absolutely. All yeah. right, Dave, we'll make talk sure about the Bass Assassin's new color next week. Yeah, yeah, make sure you get that Kirk Freeport number, though. All yeah. right. That's the only way you can get that thing. Bree, we should get one of those for Joe for Father's Day. Father's Day? Yeah. Whoa, scary. <laughs> hey, for all of you guys that thought it was Tag Heuer, it's actually Tag Hauer. Tag Just Hauer. so you know, it's German. Tag Hauer. That was a bad German accent. Okay, now <laughs> hailing from the Central East region is Captain Jim Ross with everything you'll need to know about catching some yummy mahi this weekend. Hi, Jim. Hey, Bree. Yeah, don't you have to put those two little things like this over the U's, the little dots over some yes, part of that thing, that's too? that's very German. Yes, Hauer. yes, definitely. Well, you know what? What's not German is the dolphin around this place. <laughs> and a lot of the colorful fish are coming you know, to the docks when guys can get out. That's been, been our problem lately. We've had a lot of east wind and we're just not able to get out and, and have a, you know, a really, really successful uh, couple of days. So we're, the guys and gals that have been getting out are just going, you know what, we really need this wind to turn off and, and be able to get out on some good, solid stuff. But you know what, this week's theme species is usually caught in the 120 to 500 foot depth by trolling skirted ballyhoo at about four to six knots. And you know, you want to look for some kind of feature. Uh, something in the water that's different. Floating weeds, boards, flotsam of some type. Temperature breaks and color changes are also really good because 
all of those things are going to hold bait fish. And if they hold bait fish, then they're probably going to hold those dolphin as well. Now, good areas to check if you don't see those surface features are hard bottom structures like reefs or wrecks. Um, you know, rips are pretty good too, especially the ones on the western edge of the Gulf Stream. But even some days you can't find those rips. So finding those reefs and wrecks, hard structure, you're going to have bait fish that will typically hang over the top of them, and you're going to find dolphin find, you know, feeding around those areas. Now our average dolphin is about 7 to 15 pounds, but we've had fish to 50 pounds come in this, you know, in this year so far. So especially some of the tournaments, the guys have been getting some really big ones in the tournaments. And then last week's theme species, which was the king mackerel, is our other species that guys can go out and troll for this week. You want to look for them on the offshore bars in the 60 to 90 foot depths throughout the region. Kings are striking troll ballyhoo, flying fish, or mullet, uh, you know, in the 60, now, well, basically if you're trolling, you really want to stay out about 90 to maybe 150 foot depths to get the kings. But if you're slow trolling with menhaden, blue runners, sardines, pilchards, things of that nature, that's where you're going to, you know, find them in that 60-foot depth or even less. You can find them all the way into the beach in some cases if the water's clean. Most of those fish that you're going to find on the beach are going to be 20 to 40-pound fish. They're going to be typically be bigger fish than those fish that we're finding out on the reefs because those bigger fish are going to start coming inshore looking for bait pods to feed on and also to spawn. We've got a full moon that's happening right now and then another one next month, and they're going to spawn on both of those. Now, the reef fish are typically 10 to 25 pounds on average. They're going to be a little bit smaller. And rolling inshore, speckled trout have always been pretty much in my report each week. But I'll tell you, this week it's really the best of the species to go target. Um, we've had windy conditions. It's gotten really muddy in some of the, some of the places, it's, and we've got an algae bloom that's starting in the Mosquito Lagoon. So guys can go catch this, these trout in the Indian or Banana River or the Mosquito Lagoon where they find mullet schools. And the trout aren't typically as picky about the water as the redfish are. If slightly discolored water, it's still pretty good. But you want to do something that makes some noise, trout-like noise. And so let that noise be your friend through a rappel of skitter walks or the saltwater assassin rattling cork, that quick cork, uh, with some kind of, you know, kind of jig or shrimp under it, especially during the low light conditions. But once again, in dirty water, you're going to find that the trout are going to come to that noise. And most of our trout right now are running one to two pounds. Now, our other species that we typically always talk about is the redfish. And yes, of course, we're catching redfish. Uh, they've been a little picky, though, especially in the Mosquito Lagoon side. Uh, they're feeding on small mud crabs and little shrimps and things right now over the sandy bottom areas. And the combination between the slightly dirtier or algae-laden water and the fish not being as aggressive as they normally are is making them a little bit more difficult. A lot of times you'll actually see them if the water's clean enough. You'll see them laying motionless with their head tilting down, looking at the bottom. They're not actually tailing, per se, Rick, like we see out on the flat, say, on, on snake bite where at low tide you see tails waving. They're not really doing that. But they're tilting, and they're looking at the crustaceans that are buried in the grass, and then they'll pick them up. So small jigs that don't move very much, live shrimp or little crabs or little bits of cut bait seem to be working pretty good. Now, also pinfish and pigfish are working very well, especially if you put them under a rattling cord, because the redfish will come to those rattles as well. Most of our reds are running about 3 to 5 pounds. But, you know, we get them over 40 inches on a regular basis. And especially right now, if you're fishing in some of the deeper structures around the Hall River Canal area or around some of the bridge pilings around the Melbourne area, Cocoa Beach area, or even up around the New Smyrna area, you can find them around some of those bridge pilings. Very thorough report this week, Jim. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hookup lure hotspots from the Central East region. In short, trout in the shallow water flats in the Indian Banana Mosquito Lagoon Look for the mullet schools and throw skitter walk or bass assassins. And then offshore kingfish troll offshore bars and reefs in 60 to 90 feet of water. Troll ballyhoo, flying fish, mullet, or a plethora of live bait. <laughs> Whoa, Rick. All right, when we return on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we will check in with the Northeast region. Plus, I got to go fishing in the Panhandle region with Pat, Damien, and wait till you see what we caught. I can't wait. We'll be right back. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala. Catch the latest at Rapala.com. Startron. Cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Yeti Coolers. Built for the wild. 
CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 30 years. Strike Zone Fishing. Guy Harvey, marine wildlife artist and conservationist. And Sea Sucker, vacuum mounting systems. Serious fishermen demand quality equipment on their boats and on shore. That's why Florida boaters have trusted decks and docks for over 20 years for dock lumber, hardware, and accessories. Tough products that stand up to the roughest environments and elegance to please the most discerning homeowner tastes. Decks and docks, supplying waterfront customers with lumber, decking, and seawall with 10 locations across Florida. I have a video I want you to watch and no matter what, I need you to stay focused. Don't take your eyes off the screen. It's hard to stay focused. Text message alerts from Chevy let you send a text response at the touch of a button so you can focus on driving. This will make it a little easier to keep my eye on the road. It's amazing. Hi, I'm here at the PowerPool headquarters with your PowerPool tip of the week. This week we're going to talk a little bit about one of the cool accessories for your PowerPool anchor, and that's the drift paddle. Now, if you've ever needed to slow your boat down in windy conditions, you may have tried to use a traditional sea anchor or drift sock. Well, with the drift paddle, you can virtually eliminate that. This simply attaches to your PowerPool and deploys using the same remote control, but it has a couple of unique advantages over a drift sock. Number one, it's got seven different locking positions so you can rotate it. That allows you to actually change the angle of the bow relative to your drift. Another great feature is that this can be deployed at different depths. So if you want to dial in the perfect speed, you can raise and lower this in the water column. That allows you to dial in that perfect speed for whatever bait that you're throwing. And that's your power pole tip of the week. That was kind of cool, huh, Brie? Yeah, flippers. Yeah, man. Look like, like scuba flippers. Yeah, man. All right, Rick, a few weeks ago, I went up to the Panhandle region for a couple days to fish with Captain Pat Deneen. And besides the great food, beautiful beaches, and amazing people, there's absolutely fantastic fishing with the best captain around. Let's take a look. All right. Hey, guys, we finally reached our destination up here in the Panhandle region. And today, we are going fishing with Captain Pat Deneen. What do you say? Okay, let's go fishing. Let's go. Right on. We're fishing. <laughs> because I'm all about that bait, about that bait. No travel. Well, cool. Fish on. Fish on. What do you think of that? Uh, amberjack or, or red snapper is my guess. I love the sound of either one of those. <laughs> We're kind of limited to far, how far out we could go because of the weather. But these guys will usually oblige. Oh. Amberjacks that size, yeah. they don't get any bigger. Why? because if they were bigger, they wouldn't be that size. So Pat, when I went fishing with Jeff Page, I mean, he's in the Gulf, but here, I mean, we're in 80 feet of water right now? 80 feet. We're two miles off Yeah, two and a half miles off the beach. So that's kind of like a cool thing for Augustine, isn't it? That's uh, yeah, it is a cool thing. Uh, pretty much once you get from Panama City West, the, it's uh, not far to deep water. And, you know, I, you can catch wahoos right in here, blackfin tunas, yeah? uh, sailfish for sure. You generally don't have to go as far 
off the beach to find the blue water stuff. And you can still do inshore stuff. And if you really want to go blue water fishing, you can go out to where the deep, deep water is, 40 miles, from and Marlin, right? from Blue Marlins. A friend of mine caught a 500 something pounder yesterday. Did you grow up in Destin? I uh, grew up in Fort Walton Beach, Destin, or Fort Walton Beach, Mary Esther. But came out to Destin a lot. Destin wasn't what it is now, then. I mean, it, Why? It's just grown it's tremendously. Grown. Tourism, yeah, it, Margaritaville's everywhere. There was nothing in Destin when I was a kid, except for uh, fishing boats. So you've been fishing all your life? Most of it. Most of it? As soon as, I, as soon as I quit surfing, I got serious about fishing. I surf too! <laughs> so Pat, I know the Panhandle slash Dustin has awesome offshore fishing. What about inshore? What do we catch? Uh, the bay's got redfish in them, trout, black drum, flounders, bluefish. Hopperfish? And, and you have a bite! Uh, I know you think you might have me wrapped around a... Oh! And little redfish too. Redfish of all red sizes. Fish. <laughs> redfish of all nice. sizes. Well, we had such a great day. Let's I'm call it. So let's happy. go get some lunch. Let's go get some lunch. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. Hey, you know what? Great job. That deserves Very a real high five. Done. That was and so fun. I'm going to tell you, I love all the species. Yep, got to catch them all. Good job. And now the man himself, Pat Deneen in the Panhandle region. Thanks again for taking me fishing, Pat. I had such a great time. I can't even tell you. Hey, Bree, you can come up fishing with me anytime you'd Thanks. like. Um, hey, I tell you what, the dolphin fishing, we, we've got pretty good dolphin fishing from early May through September. The best catches are almost always going to come from weed lines or floating structure offshore in depths generally over 300 foot of water. Uh, nearer to shore, the floating structure is likely to hold some dolphin, but generally it's going to be the smaller peanut fish. You know, the, big, the bigger fish are definitely going to come from the deeper water. June through early July is probably the best time to target dolphin off the uh, panhandle. This is when the, the weed lines form a really nice, healthy live sargasm grass. And when it pushes together it, into big rafts or lines, it can be loaded with lice. And the most common way to target dolphin is to troll ballyhoo or ballyhoo lure combinations or small lures like the, the bark can sprouter. But it's also a good idea to keep a spinning rod rig with a 60 pound leader, a circle hook and a live bait and use it as a pitch bait. For when you find a fish on that weed line or that structure that doesn't want to eat the troll bait, you know, often eat a uh, fish to uh, spinner rod bait. And in fact, if you stop on some of those rafts of grass where you know there's some life and just start spinning rod fishing with live or dead baits, it's a good way to load the, load the boat up <clears throat> pretty quickly with some dolphins. And it's also a great way to all of a sudden have a blue marlin show up and start feeding on the dolphin that you're, you're catching on the spinner rods. It's happened more than once. The offshore dolphin are running anywhere from 15 to 25 pounds. All right, what else you got uh, for us offshore, Pat? Rick, uh, snapper season opened this past week in both state and federal water. And the weather's been beautiful. And now that the federal are open, there's some really nice snappers coming to the dock. The party boat swoop at our desk, and they weighed in a 30-pounder a couple of days ago on, on the opening day of uh, federal season. And uh, all the party boats are coming in with really nice stringers of fish. To catch those bigger snappers, you want to use a split sinker rig with uh, five to six feet of 60-pound lead and a circle hook with a live cigar man or a herring for bait, drop the bottom and wind it up five or six cranks, and fish with your rod tip up high. When you get that bite, drop that rod tip, give them a little bit of a drop back, and slowly start winding. And also, when you're moving from spot to spot, keep an eye on your bottom sheet, because you can all of a sudden see a very small fish of this happen to us on Monday. And a little small fish shows, spun around on it, set up on it, drop some baits down, and all of a sudden the machine lit up and we were catching 10 to 12 pound snappers and it worked out really well. And also, while you're going from spot to spot, throw a, a, a lure, like a wahoo lure, like a uh, prowler or something like that. And you can also get a bonus fish, kind of like this fish in this picture. That, that 88 pound wahoo came off the sea winder uh, last week. They were going from spot to spot, trolling the lure, and man, that's a nice bonus right there. Wow, what a monster wahoo, dude. Yeah, right. that is a big one. Let's go uh, in shore. Moving inshore, Rick. I spoke with Captain Jeff Mormon of First Light Charters in Panama City, and he's been spanking the big trout every morning. He's been fishing shallow grass, sometimes getting out of the boat to wade, and uh, he's been catching some really big trout on live fogies. The bite has been the first hour of the morning, and then once that you know daylight opens up, the bite's over. So it's pretty much, and it's also pretty much a catch and release fishery. All the trout he's been catching are over 20 inches, so you're allowed to keep one, and then the rest get let go. 
I spoke with Captain George Forbes at 38 Guide Service in Walton County, and he's been fishing the deeper water throughout the, the day in Chocolate Bay using live baits. He's been chumming heavily and then fishing either a free line bait or a bait under a fork, and he's been getting some good trout. Further west, Captain West Route, West Rosier, he's been targeting the, the far western parts of Santa Rosa Sound, having 15 to 25 fish mornings, casting chug bugs, mirrodines, and, and DOA shrimp. So the trout bite's starting to pick up. And there's a photo of a 27-inch trout caught this week uh, in the sound with Captain Lucky Tucky over in Navarre. Uh, so the trout fishing is coming on. And then finally, in short, uh, uh, the St. Andrews Pass in Panama City continues to be really good for the redfish on the moving tide. The best fight is on the falling tide, but as long as the tide's moving, you're allowed to catch some fish. Primarily, it's a live bait fishery using figure mullet, thin fish croakers, or really any small thin fish on a slip sinker rig. Target the submerged rock piles in the past, the rocks at the north end of the jetty near the kiddie pool, and also the tip of the east jetty. And once you find the fish, you can generally camp there and catch several of them. Most of the fish are over the slot, but occasional keepers are being caught. And uh, don't be surprised if the tax man comes around, there's some big bull sharks in there, and you might lose a redfish to those guys. All right, great report, Pat. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Inshore, big red snapper on the rock piles in Pensacola Bay using live bait. And then offshore, the Massachusetts wreck and the buoy line for kingfish, Spanish mackerels on live cigar minnows. All right, Rick, now entering the Derringer, Derringer zone. zone. Oh, you caught on with Derringer. Captain Tommy Derringer. If you want that dolphin catch, y'all better get out there fast, right, Tommy? That's right, you know, Bree, we love our dolphin here in the strike zone northeast region. You know, the best time of year for both big dolphin and good numbers of dolphin is going to be April until right about this time of year. I spoke with Captain Jason Hadges from jhookfishingcharters.com, and he tells me if you're going to target dolphin at any time of the year, there are definitely some things you're going to want to look for in our region. Now, most of our dolphin are caught right near the edge of the Gulf Stream and on the temperature breaks, anywhere from about 140 feet to about 1,200 feet. You'll want to find the weed lines just like anywhere else, but Captain Jason says one secret to really getting on the fish is you really want to look for the weeds that have some good life in them. He says if you find a weed line that has a bunch of different little bait fish, live sargasm, and maybe some birds picking at them, those are the areas you're going to find the most dolphin. Now, Captain Jason likes to pull naked swimming ballyhoo and also sometimes add a sea witch in green and yellow or blue and white. He tells me that the ideal speed to troll is somewhere around seven to eight and a half knots, and it's always a good idea to have a couple of pitch rods ready when you get into multiple fish. And he likes to have those pitch rods rigged up with small ballyhoo or maybe some bonita strips. Now, yesterday, Jason said he caught 10 dolphins after only trolling for just a little while, so he says there's definitely still some good fish out there. I've also had some other reports from some captains that said they're getting on some good-sized dolphin right near the ledge this week, as well as a nice mixed bag of black fins, wahoo, and a few marlin even. So the fishing is pretty good out there right now. Now I have a photo here. This is uh, Captain Jason's first mate, Drew Castle, and their happy client with a nice dolphin they caught aboard the J-Hook this past week. Man, it's that's so nice. beautiful. That oh. is beautiful, Tommy. All right, what else you got for me offshore, bud? We know I spoke with Captain Billy Hunsicker from EndlessSummerCharters.com, and he tells me the snapper bite is on right now. The mangrove snapper are chewing really good in about 110 to 130 foot depth and seem to be best on the big wrecks and the bigger ledges. Captain Billy is catching those snapper both on the bottom, and he's also sometimes getting them to come up to the surface. And they're also catching quite a few bee liners, a ton of big red snapper, and even a few good muttons as well. Billy even, you know, all right, Tommy, let's go ahead and go inshore. Really All right, well, we trout. lost Captain Tommy. Are you still there, Tommy? I'm here. All right, go ahead. Tell me about the trout, Buff. All right, man, I've been seeing some really big trout caught here in my region this week. This weekend, we have a low tide just before sunrise, and that first of the incoming tide is going to be perfect for tossing a topwater or a subsurface plug along the intercoastal for some big trout. Now, the shell bars along the intercoastal, especially the ones near the Mayport, Milano, and Matanzas Inlet, are holding some nice plot size and bigger trout right now on that incoming tide. Now, those trout seem to like that cleaner ocean water right now, as that river water is really murky due to the brown algae being in full bloom with our, those rising water temperatures we got going on. Now, when I'm talking about shell bars, some of those white shell bars that are right on the banks of the intercoastal 
has some live oyster bars that you can't always see that taper off into the deeper water. Now those have been the areas holding the most uh, most of those trout. Now we've been catching some nice fish on the trout pattern skitter walk real early in the day, and then we'll switch to a soft plastic or a live mullet once the sun comes up a little bit. Now we've been catching some gator trout on finger mullet. And speaking of gator trout, I got a picture here of Cameron Tinsley with an absolute monster of a sea trout he caught with me earlier in the week with a live finger mullet using a fish finder rig. Good job. That's now, a beautiful picture, Tommy. Good job. Thank you. So tarp, so also intro right now. I know everyone else's tarpon season is in full swing, but ours is just getting started, so I had to get in on the fun a little bit this week. Our tarpon are just starting to show up at the inlets and along the beach. Now, first thing in the morning, those tarpon will be feeding on the pogey pods along the beach and on the mullet schools inside all the area inlets. Now, you can free line a live mullet or a pogey, or you can put them under a float and drift them back around that bait. Now, if you're not getting the bite, you might want to add some weight to your rig just to get it underneath those bait pods. Now, another way, and one of the most fun ways to catch a tarpon here in the strike zone northeast region is to find them behind the shrimp boat in the bycatch split. Now, there have been, have been quite a few shrimp boats along the beach this week. And I got one last photo here of my good buddy, Captain Gibb from angryseascharters.com. And this is him and his client, Reed Gamble, with their tarpon they caught behind a shrimp boat yesterday using a live pogey rigged on a 9 knot BMC circle hook. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get to the uh, hot spots from the Strike Zone Northeast region. Let's see what Captain Tommy says. Inshore trout on the incoming tide for first thing in the morning along the ICW shell bars. Start with the skitter walk, and then as the sun gets up, go to a soft plastic or a live finger mullet, and then offshore. A good mixed bag out near the Gulf Stream. Troll naked ballyhoos near the weed lines and bait schools for dolphin, wahoo, and tuna. Bow, bow, bow. I love his music. Okay, drifting by next, we have an important message with our Coastal Conservation Minute tip, and then we're visiting the Northwest region. We'll be right back. Oh, look at that beautiful Dorado. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. The IGFA, conservation through education. Get your hands wet. Florida Outdoor Experience. Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Company. And there's no stopping Okuma. Introducing Helmmaster, Yamaha's first fully integrated digital boat control system. With Helmmaster, you can start your outboards with a swipe of a fob and control them with a single lever. Outboard trim and steering friction adjust automatically as you accelerate and decelerate. Adjust engine speed with the touch of a button. The Helmmaster joystick provides the means to navigate and dock precisely with confidence and ease. Take control of your next vessel with Helmmaster at your command. Inside you, there's an outside you. A you that finds your dinner by finding your dinner's dinner. A you that isn't afraid to pick a fight with something that has a sword for a nose. This is for that you. It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. Can a truck change how people feel about a guy? We talked to real people, not actors. We showed them two pictures of the same guy in the same location. The only difference, the vehicle behind him. The guy with the truck would definitely have like a German Shepherd dog. I mean, come on. Like a tarantula, a rattlesnake. What kind of pet would this guy have? Maybe like some birds. You know you want a truck. The all new Chevy Colorado. Motor Trends 2015 Truck of the Year. Hey, today's Coastal Conservation Minute is about treating fish with respect. 
Now guys, understand that some of the fish that we call trash fish are fish that can really save the day when it comes to being out there on the water. Now guys, jacks, ladyfish, catfish, stingrays, a lot of those fish help clean the bottom. Think of how much a shark helps on a day of slow fishing when you catch that fish. So remember, treat these fish with respect. Spend ample amount of time making sure that they're released and that they're in really good condition. I'd suggest that if you don't need to bring the fish out of the water, leaving the fish in the water, that will be something that'll actually help the fish. The biggest thing is that bonitas, sometimes they're the perfect fish for the right scenario offshore. They can help fill the day for some guy who really doesn't have a lot of experience pulling on fish. It creates anglers and helps that day of fishing go by in a much better way. That's today's Costa Conservation Minute. It's about treating the fish with some respect. Good looking guy catching that lady fish. You know anything about that, Bree? Nope, not at all, good but he was pretty liar. good looking, I gotta say. All right, and now for our last <laughs> captain of the show, Jeff Hageman from the Northwest is here to tell you that the dolphin, unfortunately, are playing hard to get in his region. <laughs> they actually are. <laughs> you're gonna have to get out there and you're gonna have to go far to get them. Yep. Um, that's the biggest thing. Everybody's been talking about it tonight, how to catch them. Pretty much the same thing on my coast. You want to look to that flotsam, uh, weed lines, birds, bait, all that stuff. You want to, once you start breaking 70 feet of water, you'll start running into our chickens. Um, a quarter ounce yellow bucktail jig is always something to have on hand on a spinning rod ready to go. We got a lot of those chickens. You get to our bigger fish, you're going to have to get a little further offshore. Once you get over the shelf, um, like everybody was talking about, throwing pink and white, blue and white, soft as with or without value great way to catch those fish out there and we've got some good ones but you have to burn some gas to get to them but something a little closer in uh permit captain rob gorda out of st pete reports a great permit bite right now and anywhere from 40 to 70 feet of water over any of the high relief structures right now crabs have been the key and with this full moon we've got right now they're pumping out of every pass we've got so get out there even in the evening or first thing in the morning on that incoming tide you'll still be able to dip some up first thing in the morning or late evening dollar size crab on a six to eight foot 25 pound liter four carbon liter and a two out four out circuit hook has producing some great fish right now they're running anywhere from 15 to 30 pounds moving inshore captain jordan todd out of st joe bay reports a good trout bite right now east of black island look for white sandy holes on the grass flats and anywhere from three to five feet of water live shrimp fish under a cork with a one ounce one out circle hook for trout and he's also catching some flounder right now, too, and he's using Carolina rig with a half ounce weight, one out circle hook for the flounder. Also, pearl uh, gulp and the white shrimp on a quarter ounce jig head is working both working both effectively for trout and flounder in those sand holes. Right now, the trout are running anywhere from 15 to 20 inches, and the flounder averaging anywhere from 11 to 16. A few trout up to 25 inches have been being caught. Redfish in uh, Homosass have been doing good. Captain Mario Castella has been reporting that the redfish have kicked in the high gear right now. Lots of redfish being caught around the oyster bars and shell bars and shorelines around Yankee Town. And the fish have been schooling in the cuts and washout bars around the oyster bars right now. And on that high tide, they've been really compounding really good and concentrating real good. And they're kind of fighting for bait. So any kind of fast moving bait, like a rip and shad from unfair lures, has been working good. And double hooks out. Double, hook, double hookups are not uncommon right now. Fish are running any, now anywhere from 27 to 34 inches. All right, Jeff, I got a question for you. You know, you're talking about those permit and the crabs that are flushing out of the uh, passes. What size crab do you like? Um, I'm, I like a dollar, anything from a, for a permit, I like anything from a quarter to about a dollar size crab. All right, so and what, how do you... We've got two different kinds of crabs. Yeah, how okay. do you rig it? Um, usually use a two-aught to four-aught circle hook, depending on the size of crab you got and how much you want it to sink. The four-aught's got a little bit more lead to it, and you might not need to add that extra sprint shot to get them to swim down. And those past crabs will actually swim to the bottom a whole lot better than a blue crab will. They're going to dive right to the bottom. If you got any kind of tide, it'll help you with that too. So those pass crabs that are coming out will help so, you get down to those. Permits. So is the pass crab is that a calico crab and not a blue crab? It's, there's different kinds of crabs that flush out of our pass, and we've got a dark, dark one with red legs, and then a lighter one with blue legs, and those are what we call a, a, a pass crab. 
And you've got a calico crab and a blue crab that also flush out of our, our, our passes. And the blue crabs are, of course, blue with that red under claw. And the calicos are that white sandy color that you guys have down to keep. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thank you very much. Very educational from the Yeti Northwest region. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Drummond Community Bank hotspots from the Northwest region. All right, Captain Jeff says, inshore, snook on the beaches and passes, use sardines, pinfish, freeline, or under a cork. And then offshore mangrove snapper on high relief structure in the lower half of the region in 25 to 60 feet of water. And I'm confused about crabs now. Confucius? Um, yeah. Crab is Confucius? Yep. <laughs> Stick around, boys and girls, because when we come back on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we're telling you what to look out for next week. So keep those fishing rods ready. We'll be right back bazooka. with the bazooka. Bazooka. <laughs> what do you think? When I first sit in the seat, it makes me think of a BMW. I feel like I'm in a Lexus. You would think that this was a brand new Audi. It's like a luxury car. It feels kind of like an infinity. Very similar to Range Rover. This is pretty high tech. Yeah, it is. It reminds me of the Mercedes. This is Chevy? Wow. <laughs> I have a new appreciation for Chevy. They thought about me. I could totally rock this. This thing feels pretty boss. It looks kind of dope. That's pretty cool. This is the jam. Pretty bomb, dude. Maybe I will go Chevy. <laughs> It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Forage fish are small fish that hold marine food webs together. Put simply, forage fish like pilchards turn sunshine into snook. The IGFA and other conservation organizations are working with the FWC to improve forage fish management in Florida. Ensuring that there's enough food in the water for our game fish will maintain Florida's legacy as the fishing capital of the world. Visit FloridaForagefish.org to learn more and to sign the Forage Fish Pledge. Thanks for tuning in to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with our captains, contests, and appearances. You never have to miss a show. You can find full episodes of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report right on your YouTube channel. And make sure to check out our website for fishing reports in your region. Visit www.chevyfloridainsiderfishingreport.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up. Next week on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we are talking bait. Be sure to tune in to Sun Sports every Thursday, plus you can catch repeats of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report on Fridays and Saturdays. Check your local listings for times. It's um, going to be smelly. It's going to be a smelly show. Yeah, I smell but, a smelly show coming. But yeah. I'm all about a smelly that show bait. that is very smelly. I okay. can't even. I'm all about that bait. No trouble. Hey. Right. It's going to be baity, though. Baity oh, and lovely. Boy. And you know what? Don't forget to watch Sportsman's Adventures. Right, Bree? And don't forget about your birthday this week. It's my oh, birthday. Shoot, he's so How young. about it? That didn't go very far. Bye, guys.